Oh, perfect timing. I thought I was gonna be late. Had to do a little shopping for some friends' kids' birthdays. All my friends' kids, they all have the same birthday. It's because their parents met up at the same fuck party. Which, word to the wise, do not be the wallflower at a fuck party. You go and you think, Wyatt, just talk to her, say hello, ask her if she read that new Zadie Smith book. But I didn't. And now, seven years later, I'm in a toy store buying gifts for 18 godchildren that I awkwardly watched get conceived right in front of me. So tonight, why don't we talk about toys? It was kind of odd going to the toy store. The girls' aisle, it's all pink. It looks like a Susan G. Komen bargain bin. And the boys' aisle looks like baby's first gun show. Toys often conform to gender stereotypes, and they get marketed along those lines. And the impact of that, it can be long-lasting. Studies show that toys traditionally associated with boys, they encourage visual and spatial skills. But toys traditionally marketed to girls like dolls encourage nurturing and empathy skills. So while a boy is learning skills to help him take down a target from 20 yards out, a girl is learning how to talk that boy down with the promise of a tiny cake. Not every toy being marketed to boys is a disgruntled mass shooter playset. According to one study, toys with a science, technology, engineering, and math focus are almost three times as likely to be categorized as a boy's toy than as a girl's toy. Like these that I got for Ulysses. And this one I got for Soup. They let Soup name himself. Fucking fuck party parents. Women make up just 28% of the science and engineering workforce, but that probably has nothing to do with the fact that all these little bros on these boxes look like one day they'll start a tech firm that the New York Times will write a workplace discrimination expose about. Chug, 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 chug. If toys did have anything to do with steering girls away from potentially higher paying STEM jobs, that wouldn't be the only way toys can screw women out of money. I got this pair of toy push cars at the store for Neville and Persephone Jade. Oh. So many parts. <laughs> Whoa! Sure, they're seven and a push car is a three-year-old's toy, but all the twins wanted for their birthday was the commercial fleet to start a toddler rideshare company. And this blue one, this one cost $64.99. And this pink one cost $72.29. Which means between this and all those little assholes on the STEM toy boxes, Persephone Jade is already learning the cruel lessons of being a woman in the startup world. Price differences like these are referred to as the pink tax, which follows women beyond toy shelves for the rest of their lives. According to a 2015 study on gender pricing in New York City, on average, women's products like toys, clothes, personal care items, even senior care products, cost 7% more than similar products for men. And while not everything that's affected by the pink tax is pink, part of why this is even a thing is because from an early age, we've shaped kids' minds to associate arbitrary colors with gender identity. According to experts, at age two and a half, girls develop a preference for the color pink. And at the same age, boys begin to avoid it. It seems like we're already limiting the choices for kids about who they think they could be. And it's bad enough we're already doing that with their names. Look, let's not kid ourselves. Soup is never gonna be president. None of these dumb name kids will be. One of them is named Ohio. But her parents pronounce it Ohio. They don't spell it differently. Still spelled Ohio. Happy birthday, Ohio. When toys get gendered, they seem to tell kids there's only room for a binary expression of identity. That seems harmful to transgender kids, harmful to gender non-conforming kids, and harmful to kids who identify as a boy or girl but don't want to play with boy toys or girl toys. Some toy stores and websites are getting rid of their gendered labels, but what's fucked up is that all toys are kind of gender neutral when you think about it. They're just advertised to us like they're not, which is why I actually think that I got the perfect gift for Ohio. This isn't a boy toy because it's a tank, and it's not a girl toy because it's pink. It's just a molded piece of plastic built to desensitize kids to the military industrial complex. And doesn't every child deserve that? Well, then I guess Ohio is just gonna have to settle for this puppy. Oh no, that's not good. This was you? You monster! <laughs>